In this video, I'm going to show you the most basic Git commands that you need to know. And I'm going to assume that you already have Git installed on your system. If not, I have installation videos for both Mac and Windows. So check them out. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get right on into it. All right. Um, I'm on a Mac and I'm going to open up a terminal window. If you're on Windows, you can open up a command prompt. And basically, I'm just going to go to my desktop real quick and make a new folder here. We're going to store our code called fruit. Okay. I'm going to go into that fruit directory and I'm also going to open it up in a finder window so we can keep an eye on what we're doing here. Okay, one of the most often overlooked setup steps in Git is the git config file. Okay, basically when you make commits to a Git repository, we want to know who made that commit, that it's you and not somebody else. So the easiest way to do that is with uh, telling Git basically your name and your email address. And we can do that with a simple git command. And this is a once and done setup type of thing. So you have to do it once and you'll never have to worry about it again, unless you change your name, but you're probably not gonna do that. Okay, so git config dash dash global user dot name. And then I'm gonna say Tony teaches tech. Okay, and I'll do that again, git config dash dash global user email. And I'll type in my email, Tony at Tony teaches dot tech. Now, all this really does is uh, in your home directory, it's going to make a hidden file called git config with that same exact information. Okay, we're done with that. We don't have to worry about that again. There are basically two different ways you can interact with a git repository. You can either make a new git repository with git init, which is what we're going to do in this video, or clone an existing repository from something like GitHub. Uh, we'll do that in another video. This video is just going to be locally working with git commands, local git commands. So all you have to do to initialize a repository is execute the git init command. And this says it initialized a git repository in my fruit directory and the file is called, or the folder is called dot git. Okay. You don't see anything happen over here because this is a hidden folder. And if you want to see that folder, you can do ls dash la. And you do see that folder does indeed exist in the fruit directory. And if you want to see the contents of that folder, uh, you see a whole bunch of stuff that we really don't need to concern ourselves with. Um, this is where all your branches, your git branches are stored, your commits are stored, all that good stuff. I just want you to know that this is ex that this exists. Okay, that's all we're going to see in here. Okay, so let's start working with files. So um, to I'm going to, you can do whatever type of code you want, but I'm going to make a Python file called orange.py. And um, I'm going to use the Vim text editor. Uh, you can use nano or something else that you're more comfortable with. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to edit all my files with Vim. Okay, so simple Python file. I'm going to do print I like orange. Okay, so we'll save that file. That file has been created in Finder. And now if we do a git status, you'll see that we are on the main branch. We don't have any commits yet. And there is this one untracked file and git is really helpful. It says use git add then the name of the file to include in what will be committed. So let's think about, about it this way. There are basically three stages to um, uh, the workflow when you're adding files to a git repository. So you have the files on your file system Okay, orange.py, and then you can add them to the staging area or the index with git add. And then when you're ready to commit those to a permanent um, commit in the repository, you can use the git commit command. We're gonna do that exact workflow a couple times in this video. So what we're gonna do is, as it says, git add, and then the name of the file, orange.py. Now, if we do a git status, you'll see that changes to be committed this new file called orange.py. And if we want to revert out of that, it gives you a very helpful hint, get remove cache and the name of the file to unstage it. So the, the area that we're in now is called the staging area or the index for future reference in case, in case you need to know that. Um, anyway, so let's commit it. We are ready. We are happy with our code changes, our new file here. So let's do git commit. Now, uh, your default text editor, in my case, uh, Vim is going to pop up here when I do git commit. 
Um, you can specify that with a git config command. We won't go over that in this video, but uh, all you have to do in here is type a commit message. So what did we do here? Um, I, I'm gonna say I added a new file about oranges, okay? And because I'm using Vim, I'll type escape colon WQ, hit enter to save that. And now it says uh, one file was changed. It created this orange.py file. So that orange.py file is now in our Git repository. So we can do a Git status. We're on the main branch still, nothing to commit. The working tree is clean. We can also use Git log to see our history of commits. So the one and only commit in this repository has this commit hash. I was the author of it. It was committed on this date at this time. And there's my commit message. I added a new file about oranges. So we just went through from a file on our file system to the staging slash index area. And then we committed the file to our repository. So let's take it a step further. Let's, let's modify that file. I'm going to open up the orange.py file. And instead of saying I like orange, I'll say I like oranges with an exclamation point. So I'll save that file. Now if we do git status, we'll see that the file has been modified. Git is smart enough to know that that file has changed from what was previously committed to what we just changed. Okay, and we can actually see that change by doing git diff. And the old content of the file was I like orange, and now the new in green is I like oranges. Now, we're not ready to commit that yet. Let's say we wanted to add another file to our repository. Let's make a new file called apple.py. And here I'll do um, fruit, fruit equals apple. And then we'll do print. I also like to eat. And we'll do format fruit. So if we would run this code, it would say, it would print out to the console, I also like to eat apple. Okay, so let's save that. That file has been created over here in Finder. And what if we do a git status now? So now we have a file on our file system that is untracked. Git has, we haven't added it to the repository yet. And we have a file in our index slash staging area, or I'm sorry, uh, a file that has been committed, but is also not staged. So let's actually add one of those at a time. Let's do git add orange.py. Now, if we do a git status, we'll see those two separate stages. We have a file on a file system that git doesn't know anything about, and then this one in the staging area. Um, let's, let's add them both at the same time. Let's do git add. And a shortcut here, if we don't want to specify apple.py, if we want to get everything in the working directory currently, we can do git add with a dot. So what that's gonna do is, if you do another git status, these are the changes that are to be committed. Both of those files are in the index. Both of those files are in the staging area. So now we'll do a different type of git commit. We'll do a git commit dash m for message. It's a shorthand. And then following that inside quotes, you can type your, uh, your git commit message. In this case, I'll do update it orange, add it apple. Hit enter, and two files have changed, um, three insertions, one deletion, that's a line by line change. And now if we do a git log, we'll see that we have two commits in our git repository. We have the first one right here where we added the new file about oranges, and now our second one where we updated the orange file and added the apple file. So we can keep doing this indefinitely. We learned about git add, git commit, git diff, git log, git status, all those good commands. Those are all local commands that only interact with your local repository. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add this git repository to GitHub. And we're going to be working with commands like git clone, git push, and git pull. So subscribe if you like this video, and I will see you over there.